Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens, Episode 4, Stress. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, with my co-host, Madison Whalen. Thanks for having me. Today, we are going to be talking about stress, what causes it, what the symptoms are, and some techniques on how to possibly deal with it moving forward. Okay, so first of all, let's start off by defining stress. So this comes from an online website called kidscottage.com. It says stress is the body's reaction to a change that requires a physical, mental, or emotional adjustment or response. Therefore, stress is part of all our daily lives. In and of itself, stress is not a, not a bad thing. In fact, when human beings react to stress by correctly identifying problems and implementing sound problem-solving techniques, in other words, managing stress, it can be credited with motivating the human body toward equilibrium. Let me start off by asking, do you get stressed? Yes, multiple times a day, or pretty much every day I have something either big going on or I do something that I don't really enjoy. And why do you find those things stressful? Well, the main thing I find stressful is, of course, school, which I've told you about multiple times. And stress at school, for me, is caused by the amount of work uh, that has added on to my daily my daily life and and such little t- and for such little time I'm able to have it done. Okay, that's certainly a valid source of stress. So, in preparation for today's podcast, I did go out and do a little bit of research and I found a survey from February of 2018 from a news site called globenewswire.com. And it asked two questions. One was, how often teens are stressed out? And the second one asks, what stresses you out most? Now, I don't know if this lends any consolation whatsoever, but according to the survey, 45% of the teens that were polled said that they are stressed out all the time. Now, do you think you're stressed out all the time? Well, I'd say most of the time I am stressed out over certain things. Well, and, and you know, dropping down in the survey, 36% of those polled said that sometimes they're stressed out. Clearly, with those people that were polled, there's a lot of stress a lot of the time. Uh, we don't get down to low numbers until we hit around 12% where they think they're rarely stressed out. I think it's safe to say, based on your experience and based on this study, that teens are stressed out quite frequently. Uh, I think it's also important to then look at the second part of that poll and see what stresses teens out. Okay. The number one stressor for teens in this poll was relationships at 27%. Now, that could be relationships with family members, with friends, with peers, and so forth. How much of a stress do you think relationships are for you? I think the main thing that would stress me out with relationships would be with my classmates. And do you think that's a major contributor to your stress? Not really. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but... Sometimes I get stressed out around them, normally when they act up. Okay. So the second thing in this poll for sources of stress were teachers at 24%. Do you you get stressed out by your teachers? Sometimes when they warn us about how how tough middle school is going to get when I get there. 
So it's it's induced stress just by, you know, kind of psyching you up to deal with the new things that are coming, it sounds like. Pretty much. So the next one in line was at 21% was other. So that's basically everything else that you deal with. Um, the next named one was parents at 13%. Do your parents stress you out? And you can be honest. I know you're on a podcast here with your father, but be honest. Do mommy and daddy stress you out? Sometimes. And give me an instance of, of when we stress you out. Is it when we ask you to do stuff around the house? Is it when we tell you you need to eat your vegetables? Is it when we tell you to stop playing on your phone? Like, what stresses you out from us? Well, pretty much that those things only make me a little angry. But the only thing that would really stress that gives me the most stress out of all those things is basically when I have to do the work. When I have to, like... Do the work, but... What work do you mean? Like, you know, you know, like, my chores. Like, no. Uh, the chores that you get paid quite handsomely to do, you mean? Daddy! So why does it stress you out? I mean, the chores, let's, let's, you know, just put it out there for the audience here. The chores that you do are, you have to clean one bathroom, you have to do the laundry, you have to vacuum one or two rooms, and you have to empty trash. All of which, and we'll take laundry out of there because there's just time-induced uh, issues with laundry, but all of that takes you basically less than a half hour to do. Yeah, well, except for laundry, of course. Right. Well, I mean, laundry, you have to wait for the machines to do the actual work, but all you're doing is flipping laundry and, you know, putting new loads in. Two point. So you're looking at about a half hour worth of work, and you find it that stressful? No, I don't find it stressful in any way like that. I mean... The work isn't that hard. It's not that kind of stress. It's like, since I have to bring homework home, it always stresses me out because I'm getting stressed out. And if I have a project, I always get stressed out. Like that one time, I really got stressed out when I had two projects I was doing. Correct. Correct. And and, and that's... And normally, I always have a project, so... And you will, and you're going to continue to have them. So what it what it is, and we'll talk about this in a minute, what it is is learning how to deal with these, learning how to prioritize, learning how to categorize them. We'll talk about what the causes of stress are. Okay. <clears throat> so some of the most common causes of stress, and this is top of the list here, is schoolwork. Schoolwork clearly is one of your stressors. Mm-hmm. Another one is changes in body or or your weight. Like people, you know, they're concerned about their outward appearance. In the case of going through, you know, puberty, there's clear body changes that are going on that tends to stress you out. Do you get pimples? You know, is your hair messed up? You know, stuff like that. Honestly, the only thing I would really care about is just my hair. And you've got a lot of hair. I mean, you've... Your hair is very high maintenance because of how long it is. Mm -hmm. You know, and learning how to care for it properly would be certainly a bonus. Yep. The third one that they have on the list here is relationships, problems with friends or other relationships. Uh, yeah, kind I have problems with my friends, but normally it's just when I get aggravated and I just yell at them for some stupid reason. The issues that you have in relationships, are they causing stress or are they the result of stress from other factors? I think it's more a result of stress. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next one in line, I'm not going to go down the whole list, but it's being bullied. Now, do you feel that you're bullied at school at all? Nope. Okay. Well, that's important. Uh, you don't live in a dangerous neighborhood. Uh, do you feel you're getting peer pressure to dress or act a certain way or pressure to smoke or drink or do drugs? Nope. Okay, so that's not an issue. Do you feel like you don't fit in? Sometimes. So let's talk about that for a minute. Give me, a, give me an instance or a circumstance where you don't feel like you fit in. Uh, normally at gym class. Okay. But it's not that big of a deal. I mean, I think there's more problems where I think I don't fit in that are bigger than in my class. Okay. Uh, desire to please your parents or other important adults. Do you feel like mommy and daddy put a lot of pressure on you? No. Okay. Good. Because we try not to. Uh, sick family members, not an issue. Changing schools. Conflict at home. Do, do you or do your parents have... Lots of fights. 
Not really, no. Not really, no. Okay, that's good. Especially since I'm one of your parents and, you know, <laughs> yeah. I try not to fight. Yeah. Um, do you think you take on too many activities at once? Um, not school-related activities, but any personal projects or chores or jobs or stuff like that? Well, if I ever have a lot going on on the weekend, that's sometimes how I feel on it. But if it's stuff I would enjoy, then I wouldn't be that big on it. So when you say a lot going on during the week, you don't mean like last weekend when we were coming home from Disney, we had another day in Disney. You don't mean this weekend when we're going to Dave and Buster's. No, because, well, like, if something was going on for um, you guys normally, like... Like going to a barbecue for a friend or... You know, going grocery shopping or, or something, something like that. new going on. Like, if we were doing something new, that would normally make me feel like I took on too many activities. But if it was just stuff I would enjoy, I would have a completely different view of it. So as long as you can enjoy everything you do on the weekend, you're fine is what you're saying. Well, I don't enjoy any time at school, so the weekends are basically the only time I have to really enjoy stuff. Well, if you don't enjoy time at school, we have to work on that, because that should be an enjoyable time for you. Really? Yeah, I used to enjoy school. When did that ever happen? It's not that unusual to enjoy school. If If you have a good... Like last year, when you had Mr. T as a teacher, you enjoyed school. Yeah. But now, I don't enjoy school whatsoever. Well, it might just be your outlook. So. So we talked about the things that can cause stress. Let's talk about the signs of stress. Here's some of the signs. And and one of the things that I think is important in talking about the signs of stress is understanding how they're similar to when we talked about the signs and symptoms of depression. depression. Feeling down or tired. We talked about that a few uh, weeks ago during our depression podcast. You feel that. Feeling angry or edgy. We know you feel that from time to time. Yep. Feeling sad or worried. We know you feel that from time to time. Mm-hmm. Uh, having trouble concentrating. I don't think we've talked about that before. Do you have trouble concentrating? Yep. In school, I mean, you're bringing home straight A's, so it's it's hard for me to, to believe that you're having real trouble concentrating if you're bringing home straight A's every marking period. Well, when I have to bring home homework, it's basically because I couldn't t- concentrate. But that's because of outside distractions. That's different. This is, you're sitting down to do something, and your mind is racing and wandering all over the place, and you just can't do what's in front of you. At home, that's sometimes what happens. Well, that's because at home you have video games and TVs and phones and cats and parents and so many distractions at home. But we won't dwell on that. Um, having headaches or stomach aches? Not really. I no? Usually... Good. Having trouble sleeping. We know that is the case. Yep. Um, laughing or crying for no reason. You know, uncontrolled emotional outbursts. Do you have that happen? Not really. Yeah. You do cry occasionally, you know. Occasionally. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Occasionally. Uh, wanting to be alone a lot. Yeah, you're pretty much a loner. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, having tense muscles. Nope. You don't have, like, muscle pulls or aches or pains or anything? No, not really. That's good. Uh, not being able to see the positive side of the situation. Yeah, yeah that's, that's definitely, definitely you. definitely me. Uh, not enjoying activities that you used to enjoy. Sometimes. Sometimes, yep. And feeling like you have too many things to do. Yes. Yes. So I think based strictly on this, because there's a few, there were a few more signs here than there were for depression. I think based strictly on this, we can say you're probably not depressed. You're probably stressed. Okay. Which makes sense considering the majority of the kids who were polled already for this type of thing have conveyed the fact that they're stressed as well now one of the things that we have to be careful of is that being stressed out can lead to depression and other things so we have to learn how to control our stress yeah and how do you propose we do that well there are a number of ways to handle stress and 
not all of these will work for you. Um, not all of these will work for everyone out there listening. Uh, but they are proven techniques for handling stress. Uh, one of which is physical activity. Now, I know you're not big on sports or athletics. Not really, no. But something simple like going for a walk. You know, the recommendation by health professionals is 20 minutes of exercise a day. So for you, 20 minutes of a walk might be very helpful. Might. It might. And well, and in fact, it might be one of these things where you throw your headphones on, you listen to your music, and you go for a walk for 20 minutes. It allows you to detach from everything that's stressing you out. How does that sound? Mm, I guess. You guess. Is Um, there a physical activity that you enjoy besides swimming? Is playing catch a good one? Playing catch is a good one. Okay, I enjoy that. Playing with the cats is a good one, too. What about lightsaber fights? Lightsaber (laughs) fights are good, although it does leave my knuckles bruised usually. Um, So, yeah, I mean, we can certainly start doing more of that stuff. I'd be be more than willing to do that because Lord knows Daddy needs more physical exercise, too. (laughs) Um, a balanced diet. Now, you and Daddy have talked about this a lot in recent days. Your diet and the food that you take in have a huge impact not only on you physically, but they can have an impact on you mentally. Now, I know you're what we describe as a carbivore. So what are some of the foods that you enjoy the most? Chocolate, bread, Pizza, um, certain types of fruit, muffins, bologna, cookies. Yeah, I don't hear a lot of vegetables in there. Mm. I do like fresh carrots. Yes, you do. Unfortunately, with your braces, it's difficult to eat them. I know. So, that's something we need to work on. And Mommy's already aware of that. And we're taking steps to try and provide a more balanced diet for you. Like with fresh... Actual fresh vegetables instead of cooked or steamed. Right. Laugh and be silly. Now, this was number three on the list, and I think this is very important. The the ability to just be silly. Laugh about things. Well, there is something I used to do in school that I sometimes occasionally do. What Can you, can you do that without blowing out my eardrums through the mic? Well, yes, I guess. Okay, what is it? It is pretending to be a parrot called Polly on a talk on a talk show. Okay. And having commercial breaks and new ads for stores with the Polly Nerls. I am Polly Brack! Like that kind of thing. <laughs> now, is that something that you do on your own, or is it with someone else? Well, I sometimes I used to do it on my own and just let people watch. Okay. Well, and if that's what makes you laugh and lets you be silly, then then by all means, go for it. I also like the little phrase I made up. What's that? How many boars does I like peanut butter? (laughs) (laughs) See, and that's what we need. We need more silliness and we need more laughing. That helps to distress. It actually triggers chemicals in your brain that actually helps both physically and mentally to keep your body balanced, believe it or not. What about, like, um, watching funny cat videos and laughing at them? Funny cat videos and laughing? Like, you know, you were hilarious on the train home watching your videos and just laughing to yourself over there. Uh, But more of that, you know? Be silly. You're you're 12 years old. Enjoy it. Be silly. Be be frivolous. Laugh. Have fun. Doing that will help de-stress. The next one that we had on the list was fun with friends. Now, I know... You have limited exposure to your friends from school. You usually only see them during school unless there's a special event. Are there things that you can do to improve that? Well, I have most of my friends' numbers. Um, my friends sometimes invite me to their birthday parties, which not sometimes, but they normally invite me. How many of your friends live near you? Lots. Pretty much everyone who goes to school with me, who are my friends, go and live in my neighborhood. So you could potentially just actually put your shoes on and go walk to their house and see if they want to hang out or play? Pretty much. And that'll probably be handy once I head to middle school since I won't see them. Now, you don't do that now. Why? 
because I normally see them the rest of the entire week, like three, five days a week, I see them. So you don't do it now just because you see them regularly now? Yeah. Well, occasionally I would come over to one of my friend's house, and we actually have something planned for for one of my friends at school this week. Okay. Well, there we go. So there's things that we can do to improve that. Yeah. Um, talking to someone you trust. Now, aside from the podcast, is there someone that you trust that you would talk to about stuff like this? Mm, I guess my friends who have similar problems with me. How about any other adults? Are there any, like, guidance counselors at school, your teachers, anything Not like really. that? really. I don't really like to discuss it with adults. Okay. Well, that might be something that we can work on that would help, because... Talking about things can be very therapeutic. Um, How about just time to relax, like reading or daydreaming or taking a nap, listening to music, a relaxing project like crafts or something, do any of that stuff? The only real thing I do is listen to music and sit on my bed and watch TV. Okay. Well, that's, that's certainly valid. I know you used to do craft projects and stuff like that. That might be something else. Even if you do it with mommy or something like that, it's... A good chance to bond. Uh, Getting more sleep. We know that we've had issues sleeping in the past. So getting a full night's sleep is very helpful. So we can adjust the time you go to bed to try and get more sleep. Um, Keeping it daily. I'm sorry, go ahead. Just one more thing with the sleeping thing. Even if you adjust my bedtime, I probably won't be... I'll probably still be awake because you've seen... Sometimes, how I've stayed up. Sure. Certain times. Well, and there's different things we can do to help improve your ability to go to sleep at night, too. Like how? Well, one of the things is actually adjusting the lighting in the house, believe it or not. There was a study I I listened to yesterday about how the body reacts to certain wavelengths and certain types of lighting... There's a setting on your phone to have it go into night mode, and it actually adjusts the wavelength of the light so it's not, um, it's something that will help induce sleep. So there's a lot of different things that we can look at for that. How about keeping a daily journal? Do you keep a daily journal? No. Okay. That's another good technique, and this is one that we had talked about before where if you find yourself particularly stressed out, Write yourself a letter. Or... Well, I kind of did um, on Friday. Oh, good. Of course. And I just wrote out my exact feelings, and then I decided to read over it again, and then I threw it out. And that's perfectly fine. What it allows you to do at that point in time is really analyze how you're feeling and think about it and why you're feeling that way. And you don't have to show it to anyone. You don't have to save it. The actual act of taking those feelings and committing them to paper or typing them into a keyboard makes your brain handle them differently. And then when you read them back, it helps you to understand yourself a little bit better. Did that help you at all? Did you feel any differently? Yeah, it calmed me down a little, but of course I still felt that way slightly afterwards. Sure, sure. And it's one of those things that, you know, it it gets more effective over time make a to-do list now this is one of the things you were talking about before when you have your projects make a to-do list of what you have to do and then what you do is you have you ever heard of the word triage triage is sort of a medical term so when you go to an, an emergency room the first thing that they do is they triage you so they they look at all the problems people come in with they see who needs the most help And they prioritize the people who need help the fastest. They triage them. So the guy that comes in who has a broken leg, who needs to have that set quickly, gets a higher priority than the guy that comes in with the flu. So the idea behind this is make a list of all the things that you need to do. Then go through that list and decide what ones need to get done first. And you do that by thinking, what's the deadlines? Okay, which one needs to get done first from a deadline standpoint? Which ones are the easiest ones that I can do? Which ones are the ones that I can just knock out real quick and get off that list? Because when you have that list, 
When that list starts getting shorter and shorter, it gets less and less stressful. So when you shorten that list, mentally, you start to distress almost immediately. So figure out what needs to get done first that needs to be concentrated on. Figure out what can be done the fastest. Figure out what can be done the most convenient. So this goes back to your homework. So right now, you're in aftercare. You have homework that you do in aftercare. You have probably a limited time frame in which to do that homework before the other kids get their stuff done first and start getting rowdy. So what you want to do is maximize that time. So you want to take the stuff that you can get done the fastest and get it done in that short time frame. And then the stuff that takes longer, you hold on to that, you bring it home. So that first part of aftercare, you get the quick stuff done. Then when the other kids are done, you go play. Because that go play part is part of the de-stressing. So instead of trying to get everything done and dealing with the rowdy kids who are trying to play, you're stressing yourself at this point. So you're taking a situation that's really designed to de-stress, meaning go play with the other kids, and you're reversing that and turning it into a stressor and building the stress. So what you want to do is do a little bit. When you can't do any more because the kids are rowdy, put it away and then go play. The physical activity, the interaction with your friends, and the laughing and being silly will all help you de-stress. Instead, you're trying to avoid all that stuff. You're stressing yourself out by trying to do the work and it's making it worse. So that's one thing that we can do. The other thing is help someone else out. You love helping other people out. You know, I see it in your face, especially with the younger kids. You know, if someone has a problem or a question um, or adults, you know, when adults need help, when, when your aftercare teacher is looking for help, you're the first one to volunteer. And that, in turn, helps you. Am I correct? Yeah. So what are some of the things that you can do to help other people? Um, I normally like to help my friends with their homework because they're always younger than me, so I help them out with their homework. I also used to help someone in my class who didn't understand the lesson very well, but I did. See, and that's perfect. And you know what else that does? That'll speak to our topic of next week of role models is by you doing that stuff, that makes you a role model to those younger kids. So when... When you do something nice to someone else, not only does it make you feel good, it sets an example. And, and the person that you do that to is far more likely to help the next person in line. So it starts a good chain. The last thing that we have on here is learn to deal with anger. And we've talked about this before. It's okay being angry. There's nothing wrong with being angry. What you have to learn is, one, don't let it dominate you. And two, turn that anger into something actionable. You know, if you're angry at silly things, it might not be good. But if you're angry at something that's wrong or something that someone's doing, if you're angry that someone's bullying someone else, or you're angry at some kind of injustice, it can spur you to do something good to solve that problem. So don't, don't look at anger as a, as a bad thing. Look at it as a call to action. But don't let it dominate you. So I think if we if we put to practice all these different things, we could probably bring your stress level down significantly. And when you're less stressed, you're less depressed. And when you're less depressed, you have a brighter outlook on things. And with that brighter outlook on things, it feeds into that cycle of de-stressing, less depression, and it gets better and better. And you start looking at the, at the bright side of things. What do you think about all these things? Do you think any of this stuff can help you? Well, I definitely think some of the options you pushed at me might be able to help. Okay. Well, we'll we will have to try them, and maybe we'll report back in a few weeks with a part two on stress to see if any of it helped. Mm-hmm. What about any closing remarks? What do you have to say to your listeners out there about stress well if anyone has ever had has ever felt stressed or anything that are signs of stress 
then I would advise talking to someone you trust, letting them know that you think you're stressed out and you need help, and I advise trying to find ways to help you deal with your stress. Okay, all very sound advice. Well, that is another great podcast. Thank you so much for your time today. No problem. And uh, we'll talk to everyone again next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.